We human beings are innately religious. By our very nature, we want answers to the ultimate questions. Who created us? Why are we here? How should we live? Religious freedom is the right given to each of us by God to discover the answers to those questions and to live by them. In other words, religious freedom is important because religion is important. The American founders understood this. They viewed religious freedom as a natural right, but also as the way to mold public morality without government involvement and as a limit on the power of government. Arlington Bridge Builders has been around for about 12 years. We serve a largely immigrant community. We utilize food rent assistance as platforms to build a relationship and actually create a bridge, particularly for families that fall through the cracks. The Knights were founded 140 years ago by a parish priest, Father Michael McGivney. Each Knights of Columbus Council has its own programs that help their own community. But the underlying theme of all of these is service to the vulnerable. The freedom to exercise our religious beliefs is critical to the kind of work that we do. Almost everyone that is involved in it belongs to a community of faith and desires to make that known through service. Faith is integral to everything that we do. It's really who we are, and it's why we help the vulnerable in so many ways. Hearing from clients, social workers, educators, and other people that have recommended families to us, they all keep saying the same thing. Everybody gives food, everybody gives money, but you at ABB give them hope. Unfortunately, today religious freedom is under attack. Proponents of a radical new ideology aim to eliminate from our society all expressions of traditional morality. They target religious foster care agencies, homeless shelters, bakers and florists, hospitals and schools. They even attack nuns who care for the sick and the dying. This is not only an assault on religious liberty, it is a denial of reality. And yet, people of faith who refuse to abandon orthodox morality are being smeared with the lie that they are haters and bigots because they believe in marriage or in the God-given distinctions between male and female. But they aren't haters. They're lovers. They exemplify life-giving love within marriage and the family and the true meaning of freedom, justice, and happiness. Often, it's the religious groups who remain on site in the wake of disasters when others have left. Love of neighbor isn't produced by government. It's the result of free and equal citizens giving of themselves for love of God. Only in America has the free exercise of religion been such an indispensable pillar of democracy and human rights for everyone. If religious freedom is lost here, America will suffer. And so too will the rest of the world. At RFI, we will not permit that to happen. Join us in this sacred fight to defend and advance religious freedom for everyone, everywhere, beginning right here at home. When we made that video almost a year ago, we wanted to highlight a growing assault on traditional religious morality in America. We also wanted to make it clear that the Religious Freedom Institute would resist the assault and mount a counteroffensive. So let me give you an update on what has happened over the past year and what RFI is doing about it. RFI advances and defends religious freedom worldwide, but only America has developed a system of religious freedom that includes everyone, and for that reason has been a source of flourishing for individual citizens, for our society, and for our political stability in America. Crippling the American system of religious freedom would destroy American democracy, which is, of course, our major concern. But it would also eliminate a successful model for other nations, especially those struggling to achieve stable self-government and stop violent religious persecution against Christian and other religious minorities. The American system, religious freedom for all, has long been a mainstay of American democracy. While never perfect, its effectiveness in protecting all our religious communities 
have been driven by the Judeo-Christian views of the American founders. And it's been sustained for over two centuries by the public witness of those who believe in a God who creates every person in his image and likeness, and who know that our prosperity and happiness depend on the recognition of certain God-given truths about the human person. That's why much of our work at RFI consists of defending those who resist the devastating lies about God and religion and religious freedom that have been creeping into American culture and politics. I'm speaking of lies about the God of the American founding. For example, the lie that this God does not create each of us in his image and likeness, and therefore he does not demand of us reverence for the sanctity of human life or the lie that God does not create us man and woman, or that God did not create sex for the love of a man and woman within marriage and for the procreation of children, or the lie that the state is wiser than parents in shepherding and protecting their children, and the political lie that those Americans who believe in this God and revere his teachings on life, man and woman, sexuality, marriage, and children, are nothing but haters and bigots who must be driven out of American public life. These lies are not only marginalizing those with traditional moral convictions and denying their equal right to free exercise of religion, but they're harming our society and our democracy. In the video, we pointed out that in the First Amendment, America's founders provided us the right to perform the duties given to us by God. The Founders were encouraging the free exercise of religion in public life as a means of achieving the public morality and virtue, without which they believed our democracy would fail. They were right. Our democracy has many problems, but few are more devastating than the growing belief that God has nothing to do with the American experiment, and that religious freedom is nothing but a front for bigots. It's little wonder that our first freedom the anchor of our Bill of Rights and our system of ordered liberty is vanishing from the curricula of our public schools. Well, it's fair to say that in the years since we made that video, the problem has worsened. The lies have increased and the assault on traditional morality in our schools and our laws has intensified. We've seen the Senate confirmation of a Supreme Court justice who refused to answer the question, what is a woman? on the grounds that she was, and I quote, not a biologist. Anyone who thinks she's the only justice who takes that position should think again. We've seen vicious attacks on a Florida law that does not allow public schools to teach first, second, and third graders that sex between two men or two women is a good thing, that marriage between two males or two females is a good thing, and that a boy deciding that he wants to be a girl, or the reverse, is a good thing. The children were being taught that anyone who disagrees with that position, including their parents, are guilty of discrimination. They are, in effect, haters and bigots. The Biden administration charged that supporters of the Florida law sought to bully and hurt the children of same-sex couples. In other words, those who defend the innocence of children really want to harm children. What utter nonsense. Even more insidious is the growing assumption that government-run schools should decide what is best for children rather than their parents. We've also witnessed the administration propose a commission on disinformation headed by someone who insists that men can have babies and that those who deny such a possibility, you guessed it, they're not just wrong, they're haters and bigots. We've seen the perspective overturning a row which would return decisions on abortion to the states described by abortion proponents as anti-American extremism and hatred of women. Many insist that even warrants a violent response against their religious opponents, and they've acted accordingly. Catholic churches and other sacred religious sites are increasingly under violent attack. In the past year, over 170 Catholic sites alone have been targets of desecration, arson, and destruction. I hope everyone watching this video fully understands how mainstream such views have become. They're no longer marginal opinions. Among some, the hatred of the church's moral orthodoxy is so strong that it justifies the kind of violence we're seeing. 
Worse, these views are not simply held by atheists or skeptics. They're implicitly accepted by growing numbers of Christians, lay people, educators, youth, and clergy. If faithful Christians and their allies do not respond quickly and effectively, the moral teachings of our Lord and the church will be driven by force of law out of American public life. And with it, our public witness to the true peace and happiness that can come from faithfulness to God. And if that happens, we'll have to take a large share of the blame. God gave us the duty to manifest his love. America's founders gave us the right to do so. So how is the Religious Freedom Institute mounting a counteroffensive that protects the rights of morally orthodox Christians and others in America to exercise their religion in public life? Here are a few examples of our work. We're providing crisis toolkits that show religious schools, churches, and other institutions how to prepare for and to defend against growing assaults on their witness to the truth. We're conducting an investigative report on the violent attacks against sacred Christian sites. We're returning the truth about religious freedom to our public and private schools nationwide, from kindergarten through graduate school with our America's First Freedom curriculum. We're bringing exceptional college students to the District of Columbia and other hubs around the nation for training in religious freedom. We're training teachers and administrators, clergy, business leaders, military chaplains, and government officials at the state and federal levels about the importance of free exercise for everyone in America. We're developing an alliance of Catholics and Evangelicals to join our counteroffensive, an idea that began in the annual Napa Conference in 2021. And we're developing educational resources for the new National Committee for Religious Freedom, created by former Kansas Senator Sam Brownback, to elect pro-religious freedom candidates to state and federal office. In short, we're leading, partnering with, and supporting other highly effective advocates in the fight for religious freedom in America. We know we cannot do this alone. So let me end by suggesting five ways you can help in this counteroffensive. First, accept with joy and determination the privilege of fighting for the truth with the weapons our Lord has given us, the weapons of compassion and peace. Unlike the brave Ukrainian people, we're not under military attack in need of fighter aircraft, artillery, bombs, and bullets to defend our freedom and our very existence. We're under spiritual attack. We'll not dissuade our opponents with the hatred or the anger they falsely accuse us of harboring. And remember that Jesus has already won the final victory. Our duty is not to save the world. Our duty is to be faithful to him. Second, pray. Pray that God will give us the courage that we need to be faithful to him by living and telling the truth about God and man. Third, witness to the truth. To put it in constitutional terms, exercise your religion with your family and with others. Witness it first to those that God has put by your side, your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, your brothers and sisters, your relatives and friends. But witness it especially to those who revile you and the love of God and neighbor you represent. Strive to conduct yourself with that love, acknowledging that you're a sinner, but one who aspires to be a saint, including by loving even those who hate you and what you believe. Help them to understand the truth. And the truth is that Christian teachings on marriage and sex are about the greatest love possible for humans other than the love of God. And marriage is an icon of God's love for us. The truth is that these teachings are good for everyone. The truth is that striving to live these teachings leads to true happiness in this life and in the next. Fourth, use the weapon of peace in politics. Vote for candidates who support the truth and the right of all Americans, including the morally orthodox, to exercise their religion publicly in culture and in politics. But also understand this, no legislature, no law, no president, no Supreme Court decision can solve this problem. If America is to change, we must change it. 
We must regain new footholds in our culture, and each one of you must be involved. Finally, support faith-based schools, hospitals, charities, and other organizations that teach the truth, and pull your support from those too timid or too confused to teach the truth. Support the small but growing number of countercultural religious institutions that are employing the weapons of peace and compassion to bear witness to the truth in the midst of our misguided and hostile culture. If you'd like to know more about the Religious Freedom Institute, please Google us or visit our website at rfi.org or contact me or any member of our RFI family of staff. I will end by recalling the terrible, prescient, but hopeful words of Cardinal Francis George. This great man died in 2015. He left this world with a clear vision of what lay ahead for the church in America because of its defense of the truth about God and man. Here's what he said, and I quote, I expect to die in bed, my successor will die in prison, and his successor will die a martyr in the public square. But his successor will pick up the shards of a ruined society and slowly help rebuild civilization as the church has done so often in human history." Unquote. Let us resolve to begin now, at this moment, to pick up the shards and rebuild. Join us at the Religious Freedom Institute in defending the precious right of free exercise for all Americans. Join us in our counter-offensive to protect the rights of Christians and others to exercise their faith in American public life in order that we, in freedom, may declare the truth about God and man to a culture that so desperately needs it. Thank you for watching. Thanks to the Napa Institute, and God bless you all.